Was it a quieter way of life where you kind of went from Don in Doncaster to coming down south to coming down to London? Um, in in some ways, yes and no, actually. Like, okay, tell me about that. Because Doncaster is a weird setup. Okay, so Doncaster is like a little big city, and the fact that like. I think I think it was one of my friends, Kyle, told me like in terms of population and overall area mass, Doncaster is actually bigger than like a lot of the larger cities. You know what I mean? So, yes, yeah. but that because it's so spread out and stuff, everyone can kind of know each other type vibe. So at mm-hmm. the same time, it's busy, but also it's a very quiet, quiet place. You know what I mean? It's just like yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone knows each other, small world type area. Uh, but it's London, almost got like a village vibe to it. Yeah, it's, like, got, it's got that old school village vibe to yeah, it, old yeah. school English village. Yeah, you know every, I mean? Everyone's in connected in, yeah, in some yeah. way, yeah. Yeah, literally, the, the, mm. literally, I grew up in a village, like a little Edlinton, a little old village called Edlington. Right. And it used to be like a mining village back in the day. Mm-hmm. And then like, now it's just like um, the ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 it's that's, changed that's, into the ghetto. How did, how did that happen? <laughs> I don't know. Some people. Uh, when I was growing up and I was in primary school, I heard a lot of talk about Margaret Thatcher and the the closing the mines or something like that. Mm-hmm. So I think some eco politic situations transformed <laughs> transformed the area. But t- so originally, my family actually. So my family immigrated to England in two thousand two. Okay. I'm bo- I was born in Zimbabwe. So right. We moved. To, so I was about two years old when I came mm-hmm. here, and we lived in East London. And so no memories from from there from Zimbabwe. Oh, it's like just two, like, like even, it must be vague. Like yeah. I have like one really core cool memory of like me, and my mom, and my older sister like just hanging out, and I, I'm like, <laughs> this is so messed up. So like I do something, I like I think I pinch my older sister, right? And then she's course. like really like crying the, yeah. to my mom, and my mom's like, oh, just pinch him back, like whatever, <laughs> like lightly, whatever. I don't know. So yeah. that's the core memory. That's my. I that's think your that's core foundation. Yeah, <laughs> pinching your sister. <laughs> so that already tells yeah. you like where we started off with like. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, so they came. They came. They brought, your family brought you over to here. Yeah, we came here in two thousand two. Mm-hmm. Um, grew up. Grew up till I was eight years old in East London, mm-hmm. and then moved to Doncaster when I was a, around eight years old. And then from there, that's where I lived for most, for most years. And what brought and what brought you to to down south to London? And what brought you to that to move to? Okay, so to be fair, like so, when by the time I was like into my second year of making music. Um, I was in a very fortunate position that I was close friends with a rapper who was already in a label. So when I was, by the time it came around for me to be interested into doing music, he was he he allowed me to join his group of of friends, him and his older cousin. They had a record, like an independent record label set up in Doncaster type stuff, mm-hmm. and I started rapping with them. So by the time it came to my second. I, more like it was more like two and a half, three years into rapping with them, doing my thing, and we'd like been doing our sh- own shows in Doncaster. Our SoundCloud was getting thousand streams, nice. that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, my friend Tender Kai, my childhood friend, who originally lived in Doncaster when I moved there around eight years old, and then when I was around nine, ten, he moved to South Africa actually. So about ten years in between, he came back to the country at that time, right. and I started hanging out with him a lot, mm-hmm. and. So that was 2018, and then 2019, he was telling me he's going to uni in London. And at that time, we started making music together. I was like, okay, actually, in my second year of uni, I met my publisher. I signed my publisher, first publishing deal with Sunfish Publisher. Mm-hmm. And then in my third year, I met uh, my manager, uh, Luana. And then this year, I've now uh, signed a rec- uh, to an independent record label. So I'm seeing a very rapid progression here mm. compared to. As initially when I was in Doncaster, over like it was like, it was like okay, now we're progressing. Then it's a slowdown. Nobody's coming to studio. There's no hours. Da da da. da. Then it's a little bit step forward. You know, it was very very slow, and that's what yes, initially yeah. inspired me to go out on my own. So mm-hmm. it's a very much collaborative effort. It is, isn't yeah. it? It's it's a it's a team sport. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not. So it's not something you can do yeah. on your own. If you do it on your own, I think you're going to get lost. <sighs> difficult. Um, difficult. Like it, like when you're up on stage, mm. you're predominantly a solo artist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When you're do, when you're in your moment, performing, sharing your gift that mm. you've got, sharing your talents, mm. it's you. Yeah, yeah. But would you be there in that moment without everyone else around you, without your management team, and without your collective of people that are yeah. surrounding you? Absolutely, absolutely not. Absolutely not. You know what I mean? I feel like even when it comes to 
before even getting on that stage, you know, the moments that lead up to being mm-hmm. on that stage, you know, the teams there, the, the, the fr- uh, you know, I don't even look at them as a team at this point because of the cohesion. I look at them as like family and like mm-hmm. the type of like bonds we have, you know, we're all like minded and like, you know, I know for a fact with Luana and me, that situation is never about money, it's never about this.